Greetings, everyone. Hi, guys. Looking very, very bright. I don't know why. I don't know how to fix that. Oh well, it's fine. I think I can lower this a little bit. How are you guys? Hello, Gail Framer. I'm glad to see you. How is your, how's your coffee date? Hi, I'm great. I mean, ooh, see we have like different, let's try this today. Blue light. Let's do it. Um, I'm feeling good. We'll see how long I stay on. Maybe it's good. Maybe it'll like distract me. I'm feeling a little bit like upset stomach, but uh, I have I have tea for that. Yeah. Who else is on here? <laughs> nice. Hi, nice. Justin's on here, I guess. What's up, guys? Hannes, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, like I almost don't want to say any anything. I try not to say anything when I'm like not feeling well. I just suck it up. No, but I try to like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I am well, I am well. And uh, it usually passes pretty quickly. Is it green tea? It's not green tea. It's some kind of digestive tea that my mom had. So I don't know what's in it, like roots and things like that. You know, that herbal tea stuff. Uh, Fatal Framer is a horror game series that I absolutely love to death. Punchline drama. <laughs> And therefore name this account based on it very cool i've never heard of it but that's that shouldn't be surprising hi B. how ginger or turmeric there might be some ginger in there but it doesn't taste strongly of ginger or turmeric and both both are pretty distinct when it's in there i think it's probably like licorice root and dandelion and and like black walnut or um for a while i was really into uh uh like natural supplements and and learning about all these different herbs and things like that so i probably would recognize some of the things in there but i don't so much i don't know if i subscribe to that anymore those are good also hi matthew hi mad mikey no you're not late you're just on time you're right 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 on time mad mikey it's not mad mikey it's mad they do work. They do work. Okay. Yeah, that's like um. A lot of people say like Saint John's Wort is very good for anxiety. Mm hmm. Maybe it is. And I should try it. I mean, I've definitely experimented with everything health wise. I was doing. I was doing the celery juice for a really long time. Saint John's Wort. Yeah, there's like certain things that are supposed to be very soothing and calming. St. John's Ward is one. I think also reishi mushrooms. I was also into mushrooms for a while. So reishi mushrooms specifically are supposed to be particularly good at relieving stress and, and being like grounding and soothing. Um, although all the different mushrooms, if you guys have like explored this at all, I don't understand why they all seem to have such different properties. Like, if they're all mushrooms, shouldn't they all kind of do the same thing? Or are they vastly different? Like flowers. That's just what I was thinking. Because, like, if you go on Four Sigmatic, you get, like, lion's mane. And lion's mane is supposed to be good for energy or something. I think that's what it is. And then you have turkey tail. And turkey tail is supposed to be good for beauty. And then you have chaga, which is good for immune support. And it's like, why are they so different? Why are they good for such different things? The chemical composition is different. But aren't they all mushrooms? Like, shouldn't they all, shouldn't they have, like, some overall benefit? 
Why are they, why are they like different species? You can't stay long today. Okay, Justin. You hope I feel better, thank you. If I could sing a little song to get you through the rest of the day, that would be, eh? mm -hmm. Well, oh, what do you want me to sing? Some similarities. Okay, I mean, yeah, I just wonder sometimes if it's like just kind of a marketing thing. Like I was buying a probiotic the other day and it was like, this is good for immune support. This is good for women. This is good for seniors. This is good for children. This is good. And I was like, why, do, why are there so many options? Shouldn't, isn't it kind of all supposed to be doing the same thing? Uh, whatever I feel like singing. Um, Ballad of the Green Barrettes. I don't know that. I don't know that. Will you sing it for me? <laughs> I would like that if you could just talk to me and then sing it to me and I could be like, okay. Um, maybe I will save that one for next time, EG. Thank you so much, Fatal Framer. Um... <sighs> What was I singing today? What do I actually know the lyrics to? Um, okay. So this is like an example of a song that I have like repurposed because I really love this song. So I really like Billie Eilish and I really love this song, but obviously it doesn't have like a great I didn't want to be singing this because it's so sad and like a lot of her music is very depressing and so like I've kind of eased off on the Billie Eilish bit and so um I switched this like it's obviously about some relationship she had that was very um detrimental to her well-being most of her songs are about that or about like how she's chasing after some guy who doesn't treat her very well I don't know if it's all about the same guy and I probably there's people who are actually like who who actually know things about her and they know who she's singing about you want something uplifting okay then i won't sing this but i was gonna say that i like changed it instead of it being like about um the guy i made it like about the karen in my head um so something uplifting barbie girl Mm. What do I actually know? Okay. Okay. I'll sing this. I hope you like it. Mm. Mm. What is it? I've been sitting here. Okay. I've been sitting here trying to figure out. No, I'm starting too low. I, I've been sitting here trying to figure out Just what should I do right to be with you right now I put my arm around your shoulder to see if I could pull you closer And I didn't want to say it but honestly thought of growing older I saw your eyes in the city lights and almost said I want you so bad tonight you were kissing my neck, you were making me nervous, and none of our friends would believe it. You were putting your hands up under my shirt, making fun of the way I was breathing. Locked up on my well and drive, blankets in the back of your car all night, and you look so good, it hurts. My favorite t shirt. <laughs> and then what is it? Um, heart is beating harder than it ever has. When I put you on a photo, put you on my dash I put my arms around your shoulder to see if I can pull you closer And I didn't want to say it, but honestly thought of growing older I saw your eyes in the city lights and all said I want you so bad tonight You were kissing my lips, you were making me nervous And none of our friends would believe it you were putting your hands up under my shirt, making fun of the way I was breathing. 
Locked up on my island drive, like it's in the back of my car all night And you look so good, it hurts My favorite t-shirt No, it doesn't really fit, but I don't really care Cause you said you was cold and you need it Hope you're gonna forget that you ever put it on Cause you gotta see me beneath If you keep it Parked out at the end of your drive Kiss you through the window one more time And you look so good, it hurts My favorite t-shirt my favorite t-shirt. There you go. <laughs> okay, thanks Justin for dropping in. Thank you for all the claps. Okay, I'll catch you next week. Yeah, and everyone have a beautiful day. That's what he's saying. You can relate to that one. <laughs> okay, that was great. Thank you, Hannes. I mean, that, that's like the shorter, that's like the Coles Notes version of that song. Hi, Brian. Oh, you're here. Hello. We need a Nessa Grant album. That would be so cool. I think my, like, my name would just be Nessa. I don't know what's happening with my voice right now. Um, beautiful, so beautiful. <laughs> Even better than last time? Cool. I'm improving? Oh, thank you. All right, you guys, you guys, you keep me on, on the up and up, okay? All right. So, maybe this will be a thing now. I'll, like, start off every live stream with a song. And every time, my confidence will build. You only hear Faith Seed. No Barbie girl. I was just joking about that one. But what if I could actually make like a good cover of Barbie girl? I like, I like when people take obnoxious songs and they make them decent. Hope you'll do a concert on here someday. That would be fun. That would be fun. I would actually have to learn some songs. Uh, <laughs> yes, that would be good. Okay, so first off, I just wanted to talk a little bit about a question that I was supposed to talk about on the live stream last time and I don't have that much to say about it but I, I only have my thoughts so fatal framer this is for you oh congratulations on finally re releasing over 100 videos did I oh good okay thank you is that a lot or a little I don't know I believe that this is my 102nd to be exact thanks for keeping track thanks for keeping track that's a cool mug. It is a cool mug. I was just talking about, it's a painting on the mug. I think it's one of the seven, you know, like the seven. I think that's what it is. If you're Canadian, you probably know this, but there's like the seven and um, there are, they all kind of were around the same time of the 20th century. And they're Canadian artists that were all friends together. The group of seven. That is a cool dinosaur, thank you. And it needs a name. Yeah, thank you, Fatal Framer. So about female villains. Okay, I don't have that much to say about this because I'm not super into villains, personally. Um, but I thought it was an interesting question. And he was asking like, oh, there's a push to have more female heroes, you know, main characters or all that kind of thing. But what about female villains and you know, there are female villains, like the classic ones. So I guess like my references will be more geared towards movies because that's more what I'm familiar with. And so like the classic ones, when I think of a female villain, I think of like Cruella de Vil, or I think of like the Wicked Witch of the West, or <laughs> what do I think of? I think of like Miranda in The Devil Wears Prada. Is that a villain? Mm, maybe you guys can think of some better examples um if I could make it this is kind of how I feel about villains I don't think we want to see females as villains I just don't think we want to I mean you could look at it from like a very superficial aspect and be like oh well women aren't as strong <laughs> therefore they can't be the ultimate bad guy because it's not that tough a battle. 
Your high school teacher? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. That's actually a really good point. I had some teachers. Okay, my, my dinosaur will be called Brian. That's his name now. Brian the dinosaur. Yeah, she was tough. What did she teach? I had, I had a French... I had a French teacher who didn't like me very much, and ironically, her name was, should I say, I mean, she's not watching. Her name was Madame Paradis, which I think is very funny, like Mrs. Paradise. She was not Paradise, okay? English, English, okay, okay. And then I had like a, I had an elementary school teacher I wasn't fond of. It did. Yeah. Um, yeah, my French teacher wasn't fond of me. And um, she had every right to not be fond of me. I wasn't, I wasn't a great student for her. Maybe your teacher is <laughs> giving essays. Anyway, so, so you could look at the physical aspect of it, but I don't think that's it. If I could guess, heist fiction is always about guys pulling jobs for semi-noble reasons for the sake of anti-hero stuff. Hmm. I just think that like, Female villains get kind of turned into like, like bitches, you know, <laughs> like they're cold and they're cruel and they're like, they get stereotyped into this one type of person that's kind of one dimensional. Like we don't like her because she's a cold bitch. Like that's unfortunately anything I've seen. Okay. And and it seems also like there's a push towards um, seeing both sides of the story. So you want to see like the soft side of the villain. You want to see how they ended up as the villain. So like Wicked, you know, you actually get to see the story of the Wicked Witch of the West, how she ended up that way. Um, yeah, it's generally the same. Like Harley Quinn. Yeah, see, I don't even I don't even know Harley Quinn. Um, maybe that's like the other side of the villain. It's just so unflattering. And I don't mean like flattering like, oh, women need to look good. But like, it's a little bit like, oh, because either you have like frigid bitch um, or you have like crazy bitch. Uh, that's kind of what I'm guessing Harley Quinn is like, which also isn't like terrifying either because because she's just crazy. Like the the biggest boss is never going to be just kind of a maniac um the manipulation yeah uh hey fish nice to see you um i mean but that's so like buying into all those horrible stories we've told about women oh so they're manipulative they're cruel they're like yeah because if you don't have like the strong physical aspect then you're going to go to like oh they have all these other cunning ways to like deceive you and take advantage of you. Um, that has kind of been perpetuated for a long time. So there's that. Maybe it's just like people don't want to get into hot water with that, you know? Maybe that's all it is. Um, maybe it's also kind of, you know, I, I think personally that like, the most important relationship you ever have is actually with your mom. Like, I'm gonna get a little bit like psych here for a second, but I, I actually think it's your mother. Like you have a relationship with your mother before you have a relationship with anyone. You, you, you are your mother as you're starting off, okay? And, and so I think like the woman as an archetype is your mom. No matter like where you go, it's your mom. It's your mom and and I don't think you want to see your mom as the villain. I mean, I think some people do, but I don't think we want to. I think we want that person to be redeemed. I think we want that person to be caring. I think we want that person ultimately to have a heart. I think like there is something to the fact that women are more like compassionate because they're more cooperative, right? Um, 
that's why they, I don't, I don't want to buy into any stereotypes, but like there is a stereotype that like women talk more, they're more social, they create connections socially. So even if it's like manipulation, like the reason they manipulate is because if they can't use force, then they have to like use cooperation. They have to use like other resources. So they have to use information or they have to use like social tactics or that kind of thing. Um, so with that takes like a greater sense of, pe of people and where they're at. Like reading, you have to be able to read people better. And I think if you're like more tapped into people, you tend to be more compassionate, caring, and less likely to do terrible world destroying things. Um, so there's that. And then, yeah, like I, I wonder if this question was asked because like, I guess I played a villain and just for the record, like I never saw her as a villain. <laughs> Like, I didn't. Um, I remember when I, like, taped the boss battle and they were like, okay, imagine, imagine like, you're throwing fire flames or whatever. I think I've talked about this before. And I was like, what's going on? Why do they want me to do this? And then I clicked in. I was like, oh, I'm a boss. Oh, I had no idea. So I played her. Well, I don't know. If you guys consider her a villain, but I, I didn't think of her like that. I didn't think of her like that. And I think the best villains aren't that ultimately. So maybe it's a better question of like, um, I don't know, maybe villain needs to get totally redefined. Cause it's not very interesting to just have someone who's like evil and diabolical. Like you want that backstory. You want to see like that they're this complex, like interesting person. Um, or, you know, maybe it's just like, we're still uncomfortable with women being powerful. I don't know, I don't know. Those are just a ton of thoughts that I threw at you. So, so you guys can, I mean, I guess, what do you think? I'm not so into like social commentary on content and I know some people are like really good at making those kinds of videos like what's wrong with this movie or something like that and they'll criticize it and they'll dissect it and they'll take it apart and I'm not really so much that person um yeah I actually think most villains are victims because you have to think like how did you end up that way? Why is it so important to you that you that you take it out on something other than yourself? Um, yeah. Um, but I I've had like fellow actors. I'm just not in like why do, why would you want to play a victim? I mean, why would you want to play a villain? I've also like met some actors. I remember there was like one guy particularly and he's like, oh, playing the villain is great. Cause you get to just be like, he was basically like, you get to just be an asshole. And I was like, I don't want to play the villain. Like what? who wants to play the villain? I guess some people enjoy it though. I'm trying to think, I mean, I guess like Biggest villain I can think in, um, in terms of literature or like Shakespeare, right, is Lady M. And that's total manipulation, but she's also such a victim, like such a victim. Oh my God, it feels horrible. And you also think, yeah, I mean, that, that actual, that story really says so much about like how a woman can even, how she even gets to be a villain. You know, like it's not through her own actions. It's through, um, it's through her husband's. So like, she can't be the one who acts it out. Um, she needs some kind of physical, like male stand in to act it out. Um, and this also, who's my favorite villain? Um, I don't know. Let me think about that. 
like well this also just has me thinking about like male and female archetypes and I don't know if you guys like 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 thinking in terms of this sometimes like I'm a little bit hesitant to be like I I personally like like being a woman very much I like the feminine and I I hope I have like a healthy you know how they're like healthy masculine healthy feminine I hope I have healthy feminine but I I think all that's really referring to is like the feminine is like the creator right like mother energy so she creates she like conceives she's like the idea she's like artistic expression she's she's like the intangible and then the masculine is is the acting it out right is the physical is like doing is doing in the world so that actually like perfectly represents uh mackers in so many different ways and maybe there's something to that too about villainhood when it comes to male female so like so it's just a different kind of thing that tends to play out realistically um if the villain is male or if the villain is female it just looks different and it's not as confrontational uh, yeah i'm trying to think of like other really classic classic examples of female villains i mean what's a classic example of a male villain maybe that's a good place to start do you like being a woman too thanks i think i'm gonna stick with it actors like jim nicholson are great villains because he's not acting i think i mean i guess it's like what's a villain to you i just can't help but look at villains says darth vader victims like they're all victims yeah darth vader is a good example i mean okay if that was a woman wouldn't that be weird why would that be weird like why wouldn't we like that if if we were to switch it and actually like having said this you know how they're trying to make everything like a female version of itself now so if we were to switch star wars oh snow white's snow white's mother is a perfect example of this by the way this like this was i want to talk about something else too but i'm on this tangent now um it's not a tangent this is part of the video but there's something else i want to get to too we'll see if i have time but star wars okay Sorry, can you, are you guys there? Sorry, my Wi-Fi. Can you guys, can you just give me like a thumbs up? Okay, thanks. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's imagine if Darth Vader is like Darth, M Darth Mata or something. <laughs> okay, it would just be weird. It would just be friggin' weird. And ultimately, I think you would kind of be like, oh, they're gonna kiss and make up or something like that. I don't know. Like, you wouldn't buy it. You wouldn't buy it. Like, there's something to the, to the, like, Oedipus complex of, like, of, like, every guy wants to, you know, every guy wants to sleep with his mother and kill his father. Okay, why is that? If you look at that. Oh, and by the way, like, this kind of makes me think about um, a really cool book, if you guys are interested in archetypes. So if you look at just, like, this, I'm not saying this is true, but I'm saying if you look at this kind of line of storytelling, that, like, every guy wants to usurp his father, right? Like, take over for his father. Um, that's very much, like, of the physical world. Like, like, <laughs> so you sleep with your mother because you want to be with your mother. <laughs> so you sleep with your mother because you want to be with your mother. You want to like be comforted and loved and like supported by your mother. You want to be with her and you take over your father because like this is your kingdom to rule now. Like you're the young one and now you're going to rule it. But like with that creation aspect now on your side. Does that make any sense? So I think that's like what's going on with <laughs> Darth Vader and like why it just wouldn't work if it was his mom. Um, <laughs> I think that makes sense. Um, 
But Snow White, Snow White's mother, that's a great example. Malef mm, maleficent. I always want to be like Maleficent, 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 right? So she doesn't do anything in that. She's a mastermind. She's the, she's the impetus. She's the like inspiration. She's the jealousy, sure. But like she sends the huntsman to go collect her. She doesn't do anything outwardly, right? She's nice on the outside. Um, but she doesn't, and even then, like when she comes as the wicked woman, she doesn't do it. She gives an apple and she comes disguised. She, she has to take another form, you know? I guess like a lot of female villains also exist in Greek mythology. Okay. I don't know if there's, oh yeah, so the book that like has, um, I feel like I've talked about this. The book that I was thinking of is called Dancing with Wolves. And it's all about female archetypes, um, women's stories. So I know most of my viewers are men, but it's really interesting. And that broke something for me that uh, really changed the way that I looked at stories. And it's that like every person in a story is representing a different element of yourself. That's why like the feminine masculine doesn't matter so much because we have elements of all of that. But so like people railing against Disney or something who were like, oh, it's teaching little girls that they just need to wait for a prince to come. No, that's like looking at Disney from a very, 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 very superficial standpoint. And you're not actually understanding story and you're not understanding characters and you're not understanding archetypes in any kind of specific way because the prince represents that active force of you that goes out and does things and rescues yourself. You're both people in that. You're both like Aurora and you're the prince battling the dragon. So you're like the dormant creation of like fulfillment inside of you and to protect that and wake that up, you have to go battle the dragon, which is also you, by the way, which is like all your deepest fears, insecurities, and any kind of negative thoughts or beliefs you've held. That's how storytelling works. That is very superficial, Janessa. Okay. Yeah, Greek mythology. I didn't even think of that. There's some really good retelling of stories. Another one that I really like, if you guys are into reading, um, Circe. It's like a retelling of... of um, Circe, for those of you who actually know the Odyssey. I love the Odyssey. I love Homer. Um, but so Circe is this witch on an island uh, that Odysseus comes to and she turns all of his men into pigs. Um, and she's, she's a daughter of a titan. So she's, so she's a god of some kind. I don't know how it works with the titans and the gods, how they're different. Titans are like older and even higher or something. But anyway, so she's a villain in the Odyssey, but you don't really get to know her. But there's there's a retelling. It's just called Circe, and it's amazing. So that's like a really cool villain, I think. And you see, um, in the retelling, she's in love with Odysseus, and uh, and his men were like horrible. So she turned them into pigs because they were going to like rape her or something like that. So there's more of a backstory. But I'm trying to think of like. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the specific stories when it comes to Greek mythology, necessarily. Okay, is there anything else about that that you would like me to say? I don't think I can talk anymore about that. Yeah, there are a lot of villainesses in mythology. I don't know why. I mean, but everyone's, everyone's terrible. Like, if you look at the men, too, it's like... So I don't know if that's necessarily so much that there's a lot of villainesses. It's just, it just seems like the gods are like constantly messing with people. And so there's equal number to like female to men in that scenario. So, so you get equal amounts of stories. I think. All right. The reason I titled this video full of yourself is because I had a bit of a 
realization this past week, and this might be quite short to talk about, I don't know. But so, I have a real thing about, like, or I have had a real thing about, and I didn't even really, I kind of knew this was running me and I kind of didn't. That I have a fear of coming across as conceited. And I, I actually like realized this kind of because I was writing it in an email, like, I don't want to come across as conceited. And I remember writing that word, conceit. And like, it triggered something. It triggered like me learning about that word, I think, when I was a really little kid and being like, conceit. I think, I think. Um, and yeah, I, I just kind of realized like, oh, that's been, that's been running a lot of things in my life. And so I've been hesitant to ever, how do I put this, like claim I'm good at anything or go after certain things, believing in myself for fear of being called out as conceited or full of myself, you know? And, and um, a lot of people will say this in different kinds of ways, but a good kind of saying that you will find out there is like, you can have anything in the world if you can let go of the reason why you can't have it. So there's something that you're holding in place that is keeping you from it. And if you can figure out that thing and you can untangle that little knot and you can let it go, you can finally have the thing. That's what's in the way of any of all your dreams, anything you want. And this kind of seemed like, oh, I think this is I think this is a thing for me. But thinking about it, and so there's lots of different ways to go about doing this, but like reason can be helpful and like using logic can be really helpful when, when you uncover these kinds of limited things. And thinking about it, I was like, okay, so in high school, I was very good at math. And I didn't have an issue with that. Like I was never like, I'm so conceited about my math skills. Like, <laughs> I guess that, yeah, I didn't think like, wow, I'm so full of myself that I believe I'm good in math. I didn't think like that. Um, and if you were to look at it from the opposite way, okay, if there was like, if there was a student who was really bad at math, what's 10 plus 10? 20. See, I told you I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Um, if there was a student who's really bad at math and you were to tell her, I'm assuming it's a her, unfortunately that tends to be a prejudice that um, guys tend to think they're better at math than girls. Maybe that's changed now. Anyway, if you were to tell her, hey, you're really good at math and she were to be like, no, no, no. I can't think that way about myself because that's conceited. And so she's just gonna continue getting mediocre grades and believing that she's really bad at this thing because it protects her in that way, right? It's like doing her a service, it's protecting her and keeping her in what she feels is safe. So like, I might not like feeling bad about myself and my intelligence when it comes to this thing, but it keeps me safe. At least I'm not conceited. At least like other people don't think I'm like all high and mighty because I'm good at school or good at math or that kind of thing. You would look at that, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. She should do the best that she possibly can and if believing in herself helps get her grades up or whatever and helps her like do whatever she wants to do, then she should believe in herself. And it's not conceited, it's just like, it's just believing in yourself. So there's a difference. But so like seeing that, I'm looking at like certain areas of my life where I've been like, oh no, I can't think too highly of myself and being like, if this was math, I would just, I would just feel about it the way I would feel about math. I would be like, what mentality did I have around that? I just always thought I could do it. I just never questioned it. I just was like, yeah, I'm good at this. And I didn't have anything around saying I'm good at this. So that's kind of how I've been something something switched for me in terms of that and I think it actually touches a lot of different areas of my life and so that's very comforting and this goes too for like for myself actually it has gone a lot for like physical things for for like money for for like friends for just people liking me or that kind of thing like 
um, if it, it's such like a broad thing to be like kind of believing in yourself and kind of feeling yourself and kind of like full of yourself, like, yeah, I'm great. If you have an issue with thinking you're good, that's going to touch a lot of different areas, right? And the other thing about this too is like everyone is just projecting out your fears, okay? So there's never, you never need be afraid of anyone. If they tell you things, like I shared with you guys how, how I had this person who was like telling me, you're in your head so much. And it really was triggering for me. And then I caught it that I was like, oh, that's a fear I have. I have a fear. I've been thinking that I think too much. And he's saying that back to me. And so I don't need to be afraid of it. He's just telling me what I already think about myself. So if someone says like, you're full of yourself because you decide, you know what, I've lived my existence up to this point thinking I'm bad at this, 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 and that I'm, I'm not worthy, I'm not deserving, I'm ugly, I'm like whatever. Okay, I've done my existence doing that and it's kept me safe from people thinking that I'm taking too much of the pie or whatever. Let me try believing something else and actually saying that I'm great, I'm good at this, I'm good at this, I'm good at this, I'm good at this, I'm good at this. And if people reflect back to me like, oh, wow, you really think you're something? That is just another fear that you have, an expectation that you have. And if you can look that in the eye and be like, it's okay. Like, I'm allowed, I'm allowed to feel good. I'm allowed to feel good and like happy about all the things that I can do and all the things that I have in this life. It's fine. Then those will go away. So that's like, that's really what? Oh, hi, Justin. Guess who's back? So that's like, yeah, I feel like that's very short. But that's what I wanted to talk about. That like, if any of you do have a fear of not wanting to like shine that little light of yours, like that's just your fear. And if anyone is ever telling you to like, okay, like don't think too highly of yourself. Like, you know, keep it, keep it in check. Be humble. Um, yeah, that's just you. That's just you thinking I'm not allowed to take this much space or I'm not allowed to shine this brightly or I'm, oh, this gets in the way or people don't like this or whatever it is. The truth is that like when you're actually full of yourself, when you're actually like feeling yourself and like I'm proud and happy and expansive and excited and like, and just kind of, I'm, I'm not for like being in love with yourself, but like knowing that you're great, that you are, because every single person on the planet is great. The truth is like, you don't have to be a villain, to put it that way. I'm gonna come, yes, I'm gonna do a callback and I'm gonna bring this full circle. So like villains are victims because they didn't get enough of the pie. So then they have to force, okay? They have to like go out there into like physical world, into their masculine selves or whatever, and they have to force things and they have to take because they feel they've never gotten and they don't realize that they never got because they didn't give to themselves and they didn't realize that they could have everything they want if they could let go of any kind of story that they can't have it, okay? <laughs> so it makes you stingy. It makes you power hungry when you don't feel like you're powerful when you don't feel like you have enough, when you don't feel like you're good enough, that's what turns you into a villain and makes you, to put it this way, a bitch or an asshole, okay? That's what does it. You're resentful, you're angry. You're angry because you didn't get it, okay? But that's just you pushed out. That is just you pushed out. It's just a reflection of what you think you can have and what you think you deserve and what you think you are, okay? So if you actually step into the fact that you're great and you're luminous and you're wonderful and you're delightful and you're funny and you're spectacular and you're talented and you're successful and you're beautiful and you're smart and you're whatever qualities or adjectives or whatever you want to put on yourself, if you actually step into that and you claim that for yourself, you're not going to need to push or force anything. You're not going to need to take anything from anyone else. You're not going to need to boast or brag because you have everything you want. And so there's nothing that you need to force on anyone. There's nothing that you need to take. There's nothing that you need to steal. There's nothing that you need to manipulate because you realize that you have all the power all along. 
You have had all the power all along. So if there's any part of you that's like, mm, but it feels so like gross or something to say, to say I'm good enough. Yeah, that's just like your little ego self trying to keep you safe, thinking that you're not allowed to have that. That it's better off, it's better off, like we're okay here, we're okay here. We're, we're getting by. Like we don't think very highly of ourselves, but we're okay, we have a roof. We're doing okay. <laughs> and the other thing with this too, like with the math thing, and, and I, I, I almost made a video about this when it comes to money. Because some people will say like, oh, I have a bad money mindset or things like that. Like, I don't think I'm deserving. So I, I just want to point out something about that whole like, I don't think I'm deserving. You actually do think you're deserving. It's just that you think you're deserving of a specific thing. So people in the West specifically, and I'm assuming that's like most, of, most people who are watching now, like you have a great money mindset about the things that are normal to you, about the things that most people have. Like we are richer, the average person is richer than kings of kings and queens of the 15th century, right? Because we have technology and we have comfort and we have toilets and we have all these things that they didn't have. So actually we're incredibly rich. It's just, we don't see it as riches. So we don't need to like up our money mindset or like up our sense of worthiness to believe that we're allowed to have a bathroom or hot water. It's just that we've accepted something as normal. And then we think, oh, this other thing that I want is extra. You already have like an excellent concept of yourself for having the things that you have. So all you have to do is change your idea of what is perfectly acceptable for you to have, such as being good at math. There's nothing extraordinary about being good at math or conceited about being good at math if say everyone was good at math. Like no one's like, oh wow, <laughs> you think you speak English really well? You're conceited because if you're English speaking and you live in an English country, it's normal for you to speak English. So it's whatever you can like, you can take as just being normal and natural and fine for you to have. I kind of think that, I, I mean, I'm not great at the Bible, but I kind of think that's actually more what they mean when they say the meek shall inherit the earth. I kind of think that's more it, but I haven't figured that out yet. Those are just like, that's my thoughts about it. Okay, let me look at what you guys have been talking about. Yeah. Think about like, I'm pretty sure every person has done something bad to someone else. And if you think about why you did it, it's probably because you wanted to feel powerful. You wanted to take back something that you thought you had lost. And you didn't recognize that you lost it because you thought it first. You thought it first, you thought first that you weren't good enough or that that person didn't love you or that person didn't protect you or that person did something to you or you had an idea about yourself that you were you were stupid or small or something and so then it got reflected out in that way that is what I was going through for about two months ago mm -hmm. riches changed during what era you were born in yeah so anyway it's just stupid to have any kind of conversation about like deservedness when it comes to money because like we're all incredibly capable of claiming all the things that we have now so so if anyone tells you like oh you want a fancy car wow you must think you're sp like if any if there's any kind of conversation around that it's like no one would question you wanting to have wi-fi no one would question that but that back then was like incredibly well that was unheard of that was magic So just like, I just kind of think, just neutralize all that. You're allowed to have whatever you want. And if you want to be like great at singing or great at, you want to be an engineer, you want to be like the smartest person on the earth. I don't care what it is. Like, okay, why, why not? It doesn't make you conceited. It doesn't make you want to be better than other people. 
I mean, you, you have to check where it's coming from, but if that is something you aspire to be, it has nothing to do with, with you needing to be more powerful or you needing to be better than anyone necessarily. We do have an opulent lifestyle. Yeah, I don't think it's going away. I think it's gonna keep increasing, so maybe we should all just get used to it. <laughs> they're just things. Like when you do realize they're just things, then both sides of the spectrum are, are fair. You know what I'm saying? If they're just things, having too little or too less is kind of the same. That's kind of how I think about it. And, I, and the more I like let myself have things, this sounds weird, the less I want it. Actually, that does make sense. That's kind of like people who have disordered eating or things. It's like when you allow yourself to eat all the Sundays you want, you don't want them anymore. Thanks so much for discussing villains. You're welcome. I'm going to try to get my helicopter pilot's license. That is so great. That's very cool. My own family members have looked down on me my whole life because I didn't have the things they have. Now they still won't talk to me after I surpass them in life. Okay, so that's like, that's something you need to let go of. There's some major resentment there. And you need to forgive them. people, but that's, you, I'm not saying that like they didn't do things in the past or anything like that, but they're projections of you and they're like creations of you that you are holding in your consciousness in your mind. So from that standpoint, like that you did it to yourself, you did it the way they're showing up, you're doing to yourself. So really the only person to forgive is, is always yourself. And so if you can let go of the fact that you think they like looked down at you and you can change that story and you can forgive yourself for creating them to be that and you can change it and say like, no, they accept me. They love me. They're so proud of me. Then you can have a completely different family, but you have to stay with that new story. And it's, it's just changing the story. Like you have a story right now. That's not true necessarily either. You're just choosing another story, Justin. The dinosaur in the back. First cousins is what family I'm talking about. Okay. That actually might be better if they're not super close because there won't be as much, um, they might not be around as much to trigger you or that kind of thing. It might be easier. Yeah, okay. The dinosaur is named Brian. <laughs> he never used to get, I think I pointed him out and now he gets noticed. Yeah, forgive yourself first. And the other thing about self-forgiveness is like, I had a moment the other day when I was, I was out for a walk and, and something hit me really hard about, related to this, like how I had been like kinking the hose in my own like wellness, like well-being, like physical health, because I thought, because cause I kind of thought like, oh, I saw other people that didn't have it and I thought like, well, this would mean so much to them so I shouldn't have it. <laughs> like something like that, you know? Um, who am I to have this when other people don't? Uh, and I realized that I had done that and that I, yeah, I had been hurting myself basically. And I have a long history of like, a feeling like there's some kind of underlying theme going on in my life of that, of I am hurting myself, I am hurting myself and I, and I can't seem to stop and like unkink the hose and just let myself be well. Um, but I, I like saw it that I had been doing it all along on a, like a much deeper level this past, maybe this was two weeks ago. And I was just so, for a second I was so upset at myself. Um, and I just realized that like, I can forgive myself instantly. And there's like, there's never ending forgiveness. There's never ending capacity for, to forgive. Cause the only person who has the power to forgive is you. That's it. You have the power, you have infinite power to forgive yourself or anyone else. 
and you're forgiven the second that you decide. And then there doesn't need to be any other discussion about it. It's just like, you're forgiven. That's it. That's all forgiveness is. Um, and so I realized that and I just, I was like, you're forgiven. It's fine. Just now we're not going to do that anymore. What's the plant's name? Which plant? Oh, those are those? Those are roses. <laughs> I don't know. You want to name those? Oh, I guess you can't really tell they're roses. Yeah. Um, you're going to buy one and call it Nessa? Oh, okay. Just send me a picture. <laughs> Go to Loch Ness. And get myself a Loch Ness monster. That would be great. Yeah, I would like that. Good luck finding a Loch Ness. Freb the Rose. Great name. You were hurting yourself and did not even realize it. You can relate. Yeah, I think, well, if you look at anything that you hold yourself back from or disallow yourself, you're hurting yourself. So I think almost everyone on the planet can relate to that in some way in some way they're doing something to themselves and they don't see it they just think well that's how life is for me and they don't see that them saying that's how life is for me is their perpetuation of that we can do a live concert stream suggestion okay i will think about that Looking forward to your next guided meditation video. Oh, cool. I actually, um, that was really fun to do. And if there's something specifically you guys would like to do, like a guided meditation on, I actually really like listening to it. Too. <laughs> Is that weird? Like, I was like, oh, I do have a soothing voice. I quite like this. I quite like this meditation. So I've been using it for myself. Um, but I was thinking of doing like Ho'oponopono. I think that's what it's called. I was thinking of doing Ho'oponopono, uh, the, the Hawaiian prayer as a meditation because it's super simple and it's all about forgiveness. And I don't know if I have any other ideas, but maybe just something like really basic. I'm not exactly sure. I think, I think there's a lot of like woo around meditations. Like imagine there's a warm bright light and I just think it needs to get normalized it's just it's something we're doing all the time naturally like we're focusing on something it's just becoming aware of what you're focusing on and bringing yourself to some other kind of awareness yeah I saw your comment EG about that if I was focused on protecting others during meditation, does that mean I'm grounded on that? What I'm, I, I think that's what you meant to say, grounded. What do you mean by grounded? You are grounded on that. How's my French? It's not bad. Can you just say a little bit more? Because I can tell you what I thought, but I don't, if I'm wrong, correct me. I thought, oh, there's something, again, talking about, like, um, your brain just, like, creating reasons why you can't have something. What I read into you with your comment is, like, you can't detach yourself from what's going on around you or, like, what you perceive to be going, around, going on around you or, like, your, your physical, like, 3D world. You can't detach yourself from that. You can't, like, go where you want to go in your own mind because you think that leaving is leaving other people unguarded and that you need to protect them. So that's all happening inside your head. That's not necessarily true. And from that place, you're like holding this belief. It sounds to me at least that like other people are unsafe if you're not there and it's your job to protect them. And so you're not allowed to like, you're not allowed to dream in a way, you know, you have to stay grounded you have to be vigilant in that way. So there's like, for me, there's certain things to let go of 
I think, for you to be the happiest, like, most self-fulfilled person. You have to accept that, like, that people are okay. Like, that people are okay. And that you don't need to look out for them anymore. That, that like, things are going to be fine. And, and you're allowed to go off and, and do whatever you want. You know what I mean? And that actually focusing in that way is much more beneficial than you staying grounded onto this, into this, like, what are you staying grounded onto? It's like a place where things aren't safe. That's, that's what I read into it. Talk about you. Okay. I will do that. Justin, you want to talk about you? Just send me your life story and we'll just talk about you. No. <laughs> I'll do that. Justin was born. That is it. Yeah. So does that resonate for you? And yeah, would you agree with that? And would you agree with that? And do you think that is holding you back in any way? Because I can kind of relate to that in some sense that it was like, the place that I can relate to from that is like, I thought I had to be vigil vigilant kind of about like myself and my, um, I had to be careful about words I said or like where I was physically or like how I behaved because if I didn't, then, then things, um, things would go badly in my world. Um, so I had to be very like careful and kind of very, very self-aware, very like watching and guarding myself in a way because if I, if I didn't, um, I would be unsafe and others would feel badly. So, but from that place of like, I have to live here. I have to know all of the terrible things that I do because if I'm not watching that, then, then things will go badly. Like I was trapped into all of the terrible beliefs I had about myself and the believing that I could screw things up and the believing that I, I wasn't enough in that way. So I was, I was trapped in that kind of, in that little maze. Um, so it's a lot of just like, yeah, believing that you're safe and others are safe and that it's okay, like that, that you're okay, that you're secure, that you're safe, that others are secure, that, that they're safe, that, that you're not here to protect them, you're here to live your life. And that when you, when you discover that for yourself, it actually like changes them. They feel safer when you believe they are safe, when you believe the world is a safe place, you'll see that pushed out. You'll, they'll feel the safeness more than you believing you have to protect them. Suggested in the last stream, Nessa should sing the Canadian, the Canadian National Anthem in French. There's an NHL game on Montreal on CBC at seven. Okay, great. That's what I'll sing next week. Or no, I have to sing the Green Beret. The Green Berets. I want to say Berry. I don't know what I want to say. You were born January 1990. It's great. What day? Are you an Aquarius? Are you an Aquarius? I like Aquarius. I think I like Aquarius. Well, I'm not gonna, you let me know what you are. My whole life has been about protecting others. Yeah. So probably that's because like at some point something bad happened to someone around you and you thought the world isn't safe, I need to protect them. And you've just been holding on to that and created a whole life around that story. Chances are. It could also be that you yourself didn't feel safe and so you didn't want anyone else to experience what you felt, which is kind of the same thing because if someone very close to you or someone that you love is hurt, it's like it's happening to you from childhood on. Yeah, most things stem from childhood because that's when your subconscious gets formed. Almost seems like you're walking on eggshells with yourself. Surely that's so stressful for you. Yeah, it was, it was, I think you're talking to me, Katie, but I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, that's exactly how I would put it. Yes, thank you. 
Hey everyone, sorry I'm late. How is everyone doing? Hi Elizabeth. Um, I think I might have to go because my phone is gonna die. So, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Quickly. I still really have to go to the bathroom because I've been drinking a lot of water. So have Happy Gilmore. No, I haven't. I haven't. Time to watch Happy Gilmore. Is it like is it gonna change my life? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I'll just watch like a short recap on YouTube. How about that? Go to the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess I could go and like come back and just leave the live stream on. But I don't know if that would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah fractured yeah the boss fight okay it's not weird we're human okay that's what i'm gonna do i'll be right back guys Okay. I'm back. Thank you for being patient. Still being on here. All right. I mean, I don't know if I have that much more to say though. What's going on in your worlds? You miss me? I missed you. If I would open every live stream with a song to lighten the mood, that would be very nice. I think that is a nice idea, actually. And it kind of, like, lightens it up. So I'll do that. And I'll try to pick, like, try to pick some good songs. We've been going for a long time. Yeah, it's like 68 minutes. Wait, is this the longest? Probably should go soon. Yeah. Is there anything else on my mind? I don't think so. Not Barbie Girl. <laughs> Just for that. No, I don't, I don't like it enough. I don't like it enough. minutes yep uh choose a song people put up with nah no i'll pick something different but um yeah mm. i don't have anything else to say i'm sorry i feel like 
If I leave and come back, I should have something to come back to. But I don't. Unless you guys have something you'd like to, me to talk about. But I don't think you do. On the OG videos? Oh, yeah, no need to reach it. No need. No need. Um, okay. So I'm probably... Oh, that song I wrote last week was very nice. Thanks. I feel like one of you was going to pursue music. Which one of you was that? Oh, like when I, I forgot I used to do videos of songs. I forgot I used to do that. Have I been to PE? You got games, okay. <laughs> you got games on your phone, Nessa. Yeah. But I play like, <laughs> I have this numbers game on my phone and I play it obsessively. Like, I think it gathers my thoughts. I used to have a teacher who used to like doodle during class. And I think I use it like that. It's just like you just combine numbers and I play it obsessively. So that's not like an interesting game, but that's the kind of game I play. I like puzzle games. Is there any, wait, uh, I, d I haven't really played horror games. I did download Life is Strange on my phone, and I but I only just started. Um, like I'm at the lighthouse or whatever. Out of love. Like, wait, like, I'm all out of love. Is that what you mean? Is there any good places to hang out in Toronto while I'll be there on a... S Ooh, have you ever been there? The Toronto's great. Where are you staying in Toronto? You'll be on your sailboat on Lake Ontario. Exciting. Um, I love the West End of Toronto, so any anywhere like past university, I'd say, that's where you want to be. You know, I'd say you've actually passed Spadina, west of Spadina. Ossington is really cool, really fun. Queen Street is fun. Bloor Street is fun. Um, I used to live in Little Koreatown. And that's really good if you like Korean food or boba tea or that kind of thing. Um, Kensington Market is a really fun place to walk around. The distillery district is also really pretty. It used to be a distillery, duh, so it's all brick. And there's lots of little artist studios and restaurants and shops and things if you want to wander around there. Um... Yeah, but Ossington is, Ossington has some great, I mean, I haven't been there during the pandemic, so I don't know how things are, but Ossington has some like amazing restaurants and bars and it's, I just love the feel of it. And I used to, I used to live around there. Dundas West is also super cool and dope. Go to the Fed for brunch. That's what I would say. I used to live above the Fed and uh, it was my favorite place in the world. Yeah, Amazing Grace was my most viewed video. I mean, I guess it's because it's like 45 seconds. So, uh, I got 45 seconds. Out of love video a lot. What's, what's out of love? Oh, where do you mean Kara? Did I sing that? Do you mean, uh, what's her name? Alessia Kara? Is that her name? Oh, I could sing that again. Um... I was between Iroquois, Iroquois Belleville and Maine Duck last, I don't know where that is. Maine Duck? What? What's Maine Duck? That's a place? 
I, sh I get so excited about it. Yeah, I did. Okay, sorry. I thought you meant like, whatever. You know what I thought. Can't help falling in love. I, that song is so classic, isn't it? It's so beautiful. I'm kind of obsessed with like the rendition of Shawn Mendes doing like, um, Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. I just, I just love it. Um, congratulations, longest live stream. Well done, everyone. Very good, very good. Yes, on guitar. I haven't touched my guitar in ages because I've just been focusing on piano. Um, but yeah, that's a great choice. If you guys have like song requests, um, let me know. Smile Island in the middle of the lake, Maine duck. You have to wonder, like, was there another duck island? <laughs> was there another duck island? And they're like, but this is the main duck island. So that's just duck island. And anyway, that's what I think it was. Okay. So if you have song requests, please let me know. If you have things you would like me to talk about on this channel, please let me know. Uh, if you want me to just talk about you for an entire live stream, please send me your biography and I will fill in the details <laughs> um, <laughs> with my own colorful, colorful, um, I don't know, imaginings. My girl, my girl, where did you sleep last night? I'll look that up. That is your song request. I will look that up. My girl, my girl. I feel like I should be writing these down. I'm gonna write this down. Falling in love with, falling in love with you. With you. Green Beret. National Anthem. <laughs> my pen's not really working. I'm just pretending to write. Um, and my girl, my girl. My girl, period. My girl, period. Is that really it? My girl. My girl. No, it's not your favorite movie. That's no one's favorite movie. Hi. My phone died. But I just came back on to say. <laughs> Sorry, my phone died. That's what I came back on to say. Okay, guys. Dinosaur ate it. Yep. All right. So, uh, yeah, this has been lovely. And uh, I don't know. I hope you're having a great weekend. I hope the weather is nice and warm wherever you are. It is raining today, and I personally love the rain. And uh, yes, send me your song recommendations. Too many song requests. Uh, maybe I'll do a post and I'll say, hey, give me your favorite songs. Because that would actually be fun to, let, uh, to find out what you guys like. Hey, send me your favorite songs and I will find the lyrics and I will figure something out. And we'll have fun with it. And if there's anything you'd like me to talk about, anything that you're dealing with, any way I can help you, or you just want to pick my brain about something, of course, let me know. Because this, this is as much yours as it is mine, if that makes any sense. Yeah, have a great week. I'm glad you guys stayed, that's very sweet of you. Okay, and I love you so, so much. And I hope you guys all are feeling very, very full of yourselves because you deserve to be. I, you think I have a lot of energy? That's so funny. Well, thank you. A truly enjoyable stream from England. Oh, very cool. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. Okay, goodbye, goodbye.